be a food service in the... Hello, guys, and welcome to Cybercast Episode 7, the Transformer Podcast. Uh, I am Josh, G1 Hexatron, so if you can find me on Twitter, if you'd like to, G1 Hexatron, this is my YouTube, G1 Hexatron, and uh, I'll hand it over to Charles and Dakota, and they have someone special to introduce us to. Yeah, I'm, I'm Charles. You can find me on, on Twitter at optimus 4 prez and Xbox Live is Autocon365. And I'm Dakota. You can find me on Twitter, Xbox Live, and YouTube, all at Primal Sabbath. Uh, Xbox Live, of course, is spaced between the words. All the other stuff's one word. And uh, we have us a guest, uh, Charles. We got uh, 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 TJ Duckett, Akuma Style, here with us. And uh, we'll start off with the first question is to TJ is, how would you best describe your channel? All right. Um, first off, hey guys, and thank you for having me on. It's really appreciated. I normally chat with you guys pretty much every Saturday after your show, so it's cool to be a part of it. So thank you again. But um, describing my YouTube channel and my site, kumasau.com, it's basically, I just have a love for robots, whether they're Transformers, or whether they're more anime characters and things like that. I just really love cool mecha, and I like getting good collectibles of it. So for me, um, I would say the stuff I collect is a bit more high-end. Some of it's pricey, some of it not too bad, but a lot of import toys and things like that. And I would say that my channel and my site are more of a introduction or resource for people looking to get into that, or, you know, a reference guide for people who even have them. You know, I try to do really in-depth reviews and things like that. I go over all of the accessories and whatnot. So, I mean, even if you get something in hand, I want my site to be something to where, okay, you can look up that figure on my site and be like, okay, did I get everything in the box and whatnot. So, yeah. And uh, I watch the, you know, quite a few of your videos and, what I like about it is it's well versed where like you said you have everything on there from Transformers and uh, you actually got me to buy you know my first few SRC figures I haven't quite gotten to the anime yet but uh, I do have some King X Kaiser you know and Brave stuff so and that's all come from kind of going from a Transformer fan and watching you know some of your videos and all the things that it comes with and stuff like that and so really cool. Awesome, and I, I honestly appreciate you taking the time to check out the channel in general. Glad that I could kind of sell you on some stuff or make you a little bit more interested in some things that aren't Transformers because that's the thing, you know, Transformers are great. And a part of my heart, collecting-wise and even fan-wise, is always going to be with that franchise. But there are a lot of really cool shows involving robots and stuff like that out there that I don't think a lot of people are exposed to. Yeah, and uh, something I kind of wanted to throw out was uh, I never really knew what a third-party company or figure or anything like that was until I'd actually come across your channel uh, quite a while back. So that kind of turned me on to the whole, uh, wow, other companies other than Hasbro can make stuff and it doesn't suck. Yeah. So, uh, you know, definitely a thank you for that. And then also, you know, when it comes to the uh, the other, you know, mecha-style stuff, um, yeah, I've definitely, it's always been stuff I've wanted to kind of, you know, do they still make this, or, you know, is, is this, you know, is this still kind of going, and, you know, of course, all my questions are answered yes, and I know where to go and what to do and how to get them. All yeah, right. absolutely. Thank you. Oh, cool. no problem. I was going to say, before we get into, like, any more questions for TJ, let's go ahead and cover the news. Uh, I think you had a few things, Dakota. Uh, yes. So I'll go ahead and turn on screen share. Um. First, uh, we got us a, a pretty good look at Make Toys um, Computron. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name just then. And uh, needless to say, let's bring him up. Here we go. Uh, really, really digging the artwork for this guy so far. He's got that, you know, that kind of updated aesthetic, and uh, I really dig that. Um, definitely can't can't wait to see the price point on some of these guys, and very curious if they're gonna. You know, release them individually or like in two packs, like they did with Giant, or you know, if they'll come out with like the box set, like they did with the Green Giant. So, uh, you guys have any thoughts on the, on that? Oh well, I, I'm pretty sure that they'll release them individually as well. Um, it, it's really hard to come out with, you know, at the price point they're going to be at, and with a box set 
and expect people to pay that right away because there's so many other things. And I know these third-party companies, if they're going to be successful, they have to keep in mind what other things are being released during that same time frame. So you have two different Predator Kings coming out right now. Uh, you've got several masterpiece figures, you know, uh, Fortress Maximus. Uh, people need they need to, and it's in their best interest to uh, pay attention of when things coming out, so they can make sure people buy their things as well. Yeah. Uh, TJ, do you have anything to what you think about it? Yeah, to be honest with you, it looks great. Uh, growing up, Computron and Abominus were actually my two favorite uh, guest alts or combiners from Transformers. So it's really cool to see it get made by a company that I trust in terms of aesthetic and uh, engineering. So I think it's going to be really, really, really good. I'm really, really, really excited. And yeah, I just plain can't wait. It's it's going to be something. Yeah. And I'm going to got to agree, it does, it does look pretty cool and kind of see, you know, what the price ranges are going to be for the, the, the figures and everything, see how, what, how it sells. And, yeah. Something uh, something else I'd kind of like to add is I'm very curious, um, you know, the face is kind of hidden in this picture, and uh, whenever Giant was kind of in the process of being made, uh, didn't, they, didn't they take a vote on a... Uh, you know, on how they uh, would how the fans wanted the head and the face to be made. So, do you think they'd probably do something similar here? Well, I know with Giant we got two heads, so I, I wasn't sure about a, a vote or anything. But I know that they did give us two heads, so you kind of have the option. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And uh, something something else I find just just another real quick kind of uh, add on. Uh, you know, to me, I, I really I preferred the TFC Hercules over the Green Giant, but it's like you know. Make Toys releases, you know, her, uh, TFC releases their second release, and it's god awful to say the least. And Make Toys releases this, and it, you know, just outshines it uh, without a doubt, which I, I thought was kind of funny. But uh, yeah, the fun thing about Computron too is you have, uh, well, since there's five of them, two of them are jets, but then you also have a car. Uh, you have, uh, you know, nose cone, which is some kind of like drill, and then you have a motorcycle. So uh, you're getting a different design with each one of them, and even though the aerial bots, you know, they're all different, you know, uh, airplanes or jets, uh, it's pretty much kind of the same style, uh, if that makes sense. I mean, it's you know, you got the wings, you make them a little bit different, you make the, you know, the front nose cone a little bit different, but um, you know, it's to me, it kind of feels like I'm buying you know the same transformer over over again, just because there's a few little differences. Uh, this is going to be a lot better. It makes me feel like I spent my money. Um, you know, put it in a good place as far as getting different style of transformers. Yeah, but I also really can't help but think, uh, you know, if Make Toys were to do the uh, the aerial bots, you know, I just I think it would be better. TFC just kind of bombed on the aerial bots for me. Yeah, but uh, if anyone else has anything for that, I guess we can go on to the next thing. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. I'm good. I guess now we'll uh, check out this new image of Scamper, kind of new, for the uh, Generations Metroplex. Uh, really cool. I'm glad they kind of included them. I uh, didn't really expect it, but I'm glad it happened. It looks very good to uh, next to his um, Generation 1 counterpart. You guys have anything about you'd like to say about it or I'll let TJ go first yeah to be honest with you I I really don't have much to say on it I mean it's definitely a minifigure you know kind of a side character afterthought but it's cool like you guys said that they included it definitely a fan service type thing there good nod and also I mean it looks decently articulated it looks like a okay figure so it's always cool when the extra things are given attention detail instead of just being kind of Okay, well, you know, it's since it's a side figure, we're just gonna give it G one articulation and kind of uh, brush it off. No, it looks like an actual playable toy, so I look forward to it. What do you think, Charles? Yeah, I agree with TJ. You know, it's good, good nod to the G one fans out there. Uh, it it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good, uh, very good figure. Somewhat might have been on the articulation, but. Yeah, as 
I definitely like 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 the, uh, the new look. I think it's all right. Uh, you know, like you said, it's something they just kind of threw in there. Uh, what I'd like to see if we're getting this, I'm kind of curious to know if his guns will come apart and they will form six gun. So that's something that I'm just kind of curious about. If that's something that they're not going to show us and we don't figure it out until you know that very first person you know gets it out, tries to put the guns together, and uh, it's kind of like their little hidden surprise for us. So that's what I'm kind of curious about. But this is a nice little addition for us. Yep. Very much. Anything else anyone wants to add? Nope. Just, okay. I guess I'll go into my last piece of uh, news, I suppose. And uh, before we kind of get to this, I just want to say I called it. I called it two weeks in a row, I called it. The uh, Transformers Collectors Club sent an email out to many of us who were part of the club earlier in the week. And uh, basically it stated, uh, hey, uh, you know, the figure subscription service uh, toys are, you know, they're, they're shipping already. But hey, guess what? They're shipping with the, uh, the membership freebie, which is Death Charge. You know, so it's like, okay, that's cool. And then they're like, oh, by the way, they're also shipping with all the BotCon figures. And, uh, you know, I just kind of want to say, wow. Um, again, I called it. Imagine that. Uh, turns out that these figures did ship with the BotCon toys like I figured they would. And uh, apparently they're um, getting, oh, they're all getting sent to the same packaging uh, place. And that being said, I actually hope that in terms of them making up for their mess up, I really hope we actually get packages for the figure subscription service toys because originally we were not supposed to. And also there's going to be a carded version of the depth charge figure available. A few of them are going to be available at BotCon and the others are going to be available for uh, collectors club members to buy, I guess. So, uh, anyone want to touch on that a little bit? I don't have anything. Nope. TJ, do you? Yeah, I guess to be honest with you, I'm somebody who went ahead and just paid for all the figures up front. Um, so at this point, you know, it stinks to say, but I keep forgetting that I've even ordered them or are involved with this company at all. So, I mean, it, it's kind of a shame, but at the same time, like I think you called, it, it's just come to the point where it's to be expected with Fun Pub. <laughs> and I mean, it's unfortunate because I think that they provide a great service, you know, for fans, but just the execution of it is just n disappointing to say the least. So that's where I'm at with it. I still look forward to the toys. It'll be a nice surprise at this point since I'm not really concerned with them. But just the delay, you know, is really, it's a put off for sure. I couldn't have said it better myself being, you know, because I, I bought them up front as well. And I was really hoping I'd, I'd see Death Charge before BotCon this year. But it looks like, you know, everything's going to get shipped out whenever they send my box set a month after they get back from the convention. When are you guys getting these? Like pretty much, like October or something. Supposed to ship out in like, they say late June, but Bicon's in late June. I'll I'll expect them in July. So something to look forward to, I guess. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it forever. About a year now, to be uh, to be totally honest. But hey, that's how the cookie crumbles. All right, but, uh, so yeah. I had a, a couple of things to uh, show here as far as the news goes. So first off, we saw, uh, we've saw we seen these images already, but now they are up for pre-order, uh, drag strip and dead end. And we also finally got some pictures of Motormaster. So uh, there is Metasword fully complete. We've seen that one. And here is Motormaster. So let's stop with him for a second. Uh, I know that I've seen what y'all think of this guy on Twitter, but I will let uh, you guys go ahead and tell me. I think, TJ, we'll just keep on letting you go first. Sure. Um, I'm not impressed. I mean, it's, to me, very generic looking. And, I mean, it's nice to see the final figure, you know, and kind of get the ball rolling on Minister itself, or is it Intimidator? 
that they're calling uh, Intimidator, it. Intimidator, correct. Yeah. So, I mean, getting to that point, it's cool to be in that home stretch period. Like, okay, these are all made. Oh, now the color picks are coming. That means this will be all done within probably six months or so. So, I mean, that feeling's cool, but Motormaster himself, nah. I mean, right now, it feels like Fans Project is kind of spinning the wheels in terms of they've got this set aesthetic, and none of the robots are really showing me a lot of personality or character in their sculpts. And this is coming from somebody who literally has every repaint of every Fans Project toy ever made, you know, from the Cliff Jumper Upgrade kit to now. I've got it all. And I guess seeing it and buying so much of it and even as if you don't buy it, just seeing, okay, this release looks like this release, looks like this release, I'm just kind of getting to that point of to where it's kind of like, all right, we're going to take the G1 figure, give it this manga overlay, and boom. And I mean... There are definitely other restylings, like look at what Mas Mastermind Creations is doing. You know, even with the facial expressions and things like that, top to bottom, that company is doing things to give each character a very specific, you know, I guess, twist to it. Not just as, like, the group, like, looking at the Pharaohcons and stuff like that. Each bot looks like they're part of that group, but they also look like a nice like standalone, I would buy this by itself figure. And that's impressive. But I guess for me, this Motormaster is more par for the course with the fans project. And it's not saying that their standard's low, but it'd be nice to see them do more things that reach outside of that. Kind of like they did with Code. And unfortunately, you know, that was a whole different designer doing their headmasters and stuff like that. But it's just nice to see stuff that's different. Because at this point, it kind of all blends into the same. Yeah, and I've got the uh, the tr the truck mode looks good. Uh, it's exactly what you would expect, you know, for for Motormaster. So, absolutely, it's the robot mode that's the put off to me. Uh, I I kind of wonder if because of the transformation, because we know how uh, G one Motormaster is. I mean, that thing is not very good. It's not a good transformer. Um, it just kind of works though with the truck mode and Minasaur, and you kind of have all those like little base setup things as well. Uh, I wonder if they just kind of ran into problems that because of the way this is designed that we they couldn't put the best transformer possible to where, you know, something where it's a maybe like a jet or something like that, um, they can probably do a lot more with. I wonder if that's it. And that's true. You know, I don't know the behind-the-scenes part or the reasons why. The only thing that I can really give is my opinion looking at it off the bat. You know, if there's not more that they can do, then there's really not, you know. So it's not a blame thing, like, oh, damn you, Fans Project, because I like it enough to buy it. But I just wish there was a little bit more. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, Motormaster, and then we'll kind of run over to Drag Strip and Dead End? Yeah, I have to agree, uh, agree with both of y'all. I mean, the truck mode looks, looks real good, looks almost like his G1 counterpart, but just the robot mode just don't look right at all. It just is very boring looking. Yeah, I, I really, I really got to agree too. Um, you know, seeing it, I was like, you know, had I not seen, you know, what it was and who made it, I'd have been like, well, who's this and what company's making it? Uh, in terms of the robot mode, it just didn't didn't look too appealing. Now, chances are, whenever we get some color images of it, that may change the color. You know. Paint apps can really make a figure, make it or break it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if it's something that's, you know, really kind of great and wow, I can definitely see, uh, you know, see, see some opinions kind of changing. But until then, it, it, like you said, it just looks too generic. And uh, as far as the vehicle goes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, most of the trailer is, uh, like, the combining bits and stuff like that too, right? Hmm. That's what I believe I had read. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, time will tell. We'll we'll see it eventually. So, all right. And I just wanted to. I know we've already talked about these guys, but um, now the dead end and drag strip are up for pre order. So, uh, they 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 look pretty good. My favorite still is probably going to be T Bone down here, uh, or Wild Rider. Uh, my favorite character is dead end, but 
I like the car mode. I just don't. I don't know. His robot mode looks the weakest out of the four. Yeah, they they definitely. Uh, I really really like kind of the twist they gave on the whole Lamborghini aspect in terms of you know T Bone and and such. But you know, I I think I think Dead End and uh and Drag Strip both look pretty good. Oh, and one thing I did want to point out, I do like the fact that they put that strip down, the racing stripe down, just like the G1 dead end. But if you look at this picture that I have right here, uh, they, they didn't line up the uh, the door. So I don't know if yeah. uh, these are the people that make it. So you'd think that they'd be the ones that know how to transform it better than anyone else. And uh, this looks, if you can kind of see where I'm pointing here, throughout yeah. the middle, uh, none of it's lined up. So I wonder if it's, you know, difficult to transform there, or if it's we're going to get one, it's not lined up, or what the case may be. I don't know. You know, to that point, though, um, I think that there are certain companies that share photographers and things like that that may not exactly work for the company. Kind of like a Hasbro, because a lot of their photography is stock photography that's sent off, you know. So I think that might be part of it. I don't think their photography is done in-house. Okay. We'll see right there. Reason to go uh, sub TJ up. If you haven't done so already, uh, like I said, go check out his channel. Go subscribe to him. Uh, the guy's just full of knowledge, and this is pretty much what his videos are, so really good stuff. All right, we'll move on to this next thing. and just kind of wanted to announce uh, that this is up for pre-orders at TF Source. Originally, it was only a Capture Prey, but now it's at TF Source and Big Bad Toy Store. And it looks all right. Uh, I'm not. I'm probably not gonna get it. I think it was ninety dollars. Yeah, it's gonna be eighty dollars with a release date of July 2013. Yeah, I I'd like to because I was I was actually looking at this guy the other day. Uh, I'd like to kind of touch up on it. Originally, I was gonna get it because you know it's uh, the Fallen and you know all that other awesome stuff. But it's like you know, I don't. I don't really know a whole. You know, enough about the character of the Fallen to really uh, touch on it as much as I'd like to. But I know the figure's supposed to be kind of like basically power core combiners, but done way better. And I don't know. I just never got into to those figures really at all. So I don't know. I may pass on it, but I may end up picking it up just you know just to pick it up because it, it looks it looks great. But I don't. I don't know. I'm just curious. Curious to how tall it is. Yeah. Because pictures yeah. can be pretty deceiving. Yeah. I like the, the robot modes, but I just that don't that that doesn't interest interest me. All right, and uh, believe uh, TJ he uh, works with uh, TS Source. I don't believe he's allowed to say anything. Is that correct? Uh. In terms of what? What are you What are you looking to know? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Really. <laughs> Fair enough. I think you kind of discussed it, but uh, I didn't know what you shared if you were able to share that or not. So probably not. Oh uh, yeah. To be honest with you, I don't know. I have no idea, like the height wise and stuff like that. From this one, since solicitations for um, other companies just came out, you know, like official solicitations. It's like, okay, this is what it's going to be. This is what we can order from the company. I, I don't know too much about the figure at all. I don't know the height or anything like that. I have no idea. Right now, I'm just looking at it as a fan, and I can't wait for it. I'm a big fan of the Fallen, and this thing is sexy. All right. The, uh, the next thing, just kind of wanted to... Uh, throw it out there, that Acid Storm Masterpiece is going to get a Takara release. So it is going to be 13,999 yen, which is going to be pretty much 140 bucks. So that's going to be coming to Tomi, uh, which I'm pretty sure this is this is the one that we've already seen whenever we heard about the uh, Hasbro release. So Yeah, the, the paint deco looks a little different. It's something I wanted to really touch on. I think it's going to be a little bit more than a uh... Than 140 bucks, because uh, it apparently it's it's MSRPing for like a uh, thousand yen more than what Master, the MP11 did over there, and after we got those imported over here, those were like 150, 155. So 
you know, I don't, I don't really know about the exchange rate now, but if for whatever reason, you know, American online retailers were offering it, I would assume it would be offered at ten dollars or ten, fifteen dollars more than than what MP Starscream went for. I'm just going off what it says here, so who knows yeah. whenever it comes out, but it's probably going to be around that, you know, one uh, 140 to 150 range. Yeah. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is we saw Toy World come out with a couple of new things here. Uh, you've got these little guys, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, I wasn't really interested in these, so I haven't been paying that much attention to it, but uh, I believe these guys are going to combine. Am I correct on that? That's the rumor. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. So you've got this uh, little thing. I'm not really sure what it's modeled off of. Maybe like an Acura or a Porsche or something? Or a Kia, probably. Looks like a Kia. But uh, this is the thing that I thought that um, Dakota would be most interested in because this is supposed to be the IDW version of <laughs> Optimus Prime. Uh, so I'll show you guys a couple of pictures of this. And they are also releasing their second headmaster, Brainstorm, which uh, I'll get to it here towards the end. But I actually still love the Fans Project version better. Uh, if if I could, I'd really like to touch on that now. Uh, the IDW Optimus is bought, totally bought. Cannot wait for it. Completely bought, because I love IDW designs. And uh, as far as Brainstorm goes, I wasn't really gonna purchase the uh, the Toy World um, Headmasters, um, but I'm thinking about going back and backtracking a uh, what was it Hardhead they released. Uh, right. Just because I really, I really like the way this brainstorm looks. He looks fantastic, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm, I may end up just jumping on the bandwagon with them, uh, with their headmasters. Okay, TJ, uh, what did you, you like these? Is this something that you're probably going to get, or are you sticking with the fans project? Or sorry, my mic was on mute. Sorry, you know, I'm doing some typing, so I didn't want to click, 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 click. Um, But anyway, yeah, I've been going in on their throttle bots for sure. So, um, what was Grind Rod and Aurora so far? First two, definitely got those. So, I'll definitely be going, you know, keeping in with those. Those are just great quality toys for smaller bots. Now, the Optimus, I was surprised to see. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the IDW Optimus design, and I was surprised that they went with a little bit more of a clunky route, if that makes sense to you guys, yeah. rather than the more stylized, like streamlined, slim body, you know, that kind of thing. But I dig it. I really do. The one thing that I wish, though, is that his antenna, or antennae, whatever, were a little bit more outwards and pointed, kind of like that eye gear alternate head for Faith Leader. Yes. or whatever, uh, and I think that would just be perfection. But yeah, as it is, it's still bought. It looks it looks good. And I gotta support uh, designs like that, because damn, that's ballsy. Especially with Classics Optimus being so damn popular, and needed for so many like upgrade kits and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. I'm down. Charles, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I, you know, I like, I like their, uh, their looks and everything, but I don't know if I'll be picking any of them up just yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next thing, just wanted to kind of show you guys a few pictures of this, is Dr. Wu that, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty much known for, like, weapons and accessories, things like that. They are having their turn in at World's Smallest Transformers. So I believe this is going to be their very first figure, but this is World's Smallest Perceptor. I'll just kind of show some pictures of that. You guys can talk about it if you want, but just wanted to kind of show this off. <laughs> Saw it riding Ravage. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, man, it's it's been so long. I'm going to kind of go on a mini rant. It's been so long since we've had, you know, a decent upgrade kit, you know, from, from a third party, and they're all trying to go and make these full-fledged figures, which is cool and all, but, man, do I want, you know, someone to come out with a, Real good upgrade set, you know. I'm I'm tired of all these companies trying to go full on figures, and you know, when's when's Make Toys or Fans Project gonna come out with another upgrade kit for a 
a classics figure or or any kind of figure really. But other than that, it looks good. I mean, to get on topic. All right, so that'll be it. That's the end of the news. And all right, so Charles, you had a, another question for TJ, and we'll just kind of do his little Q and A section here. All right. Yeah, um, I have a question. If if a Transformer fan wanted to get into anime or SRC without breaking the bank, uh, which figure would you suggest? Very cool. I actually get asked that one a lot, and my suggestion will probably be forever. Um, the Super Robot Chagokin, it's lined by Bandai, their Mike Gain action figure. Mike Gain is actually a character from Brave Express, Mike Gain. It's a Takara um, Brave series. But, I mean, the figure itself, not only is it incredibly, incredibly, incredibly accurate to the character from the anime, but in terms of just posability, the amount of die casts, that's what Chagokin actually stands for, I mean, super alloy, um, the amount of die casts throughout it, where the die cast is placed, like in the lower legs and stuff like that for balance, posability, the amount of weapons that come with, how well the weapons fit into the hand, this thing is just perfection. And it's weird because it's like that hidden gem in that the most popular SRCs or Super Robot Chagokin toys are definitely going to be like the Gal Gagars and things like that, the more mainstream anime that are more popular with the U.S. because the U.S. accounts for a lot of Bandai Tamashii sales. But, so this one kind of went on under the radar, even though technically, from a figure perspective, I think it's the very best Super Robot Chigokin toy ever made. So a lot of places now, since it didn't sell as well as I think anyone would have liked on their end, it's normally like 20 bucks now, when the average price for these is between 40 and $50. So if you're looking to get into one, especially since you can get it for like $25, $30 shipped. Um, Super Robot Chigokin might gain. I just think it's a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic um, Chigokin toy, most definitely. And honestly, it wasn't the first one I bought, but it was definitely it's still my favorite from that uh, specific toy line. But in terms of anime, one to get into, I think one that's, the thing about a lot of robot or mecha anime is that they're they're pretty bad um a lot of them are in fact dated so you're looking at a lot of 80s stuff a lot of voltron rips and things like that but that just happen to have really cool mecha designs but there are a couple that stand out like the super robot wars um the super robot wars original generation cartoons there were the divine wars and the inspectors the inspectors is just incredible I would suggest watching Divine Wars first, mostly because, one, it's the beginning and shows a lot of intros of the characters and or the pilots of the robots and things like that. But two, you can find um, the inspectors in 720p, so just this old 480p, like, kind of VCR-looking cartoon is going to really pale in comparison to where you watch something in HD, you know, even quality-wise. So it's good to watch that one first, get to know the characters, kind of knock the crappy quality out of the way, and then, you know, get into it where shit hits the fan. Really cool stories now that you know the characters and stuff like that with the inspectors, and yeah. Um, but once again, that's Super Robot Wars, original generation, and there are a lot of role-playing games. Um, Super Robot Wars, original generations, and then they span off into... I there are probably 10 Super Robot Wars games that just bring in characters from all kinds of mecha anime for you to choose from and fight with and things like that. Just cool stuff. So, yeah. Okay, is that all you had, Trolls? Um, uh, future Encore figures you'd like to see. Encore. To be honest with you, I'd like to see um, a Victory Leo to go along with Star Saber. To yeah. go ahead and complete out the victory <laughs> saber set, I think that's very much so a given. And hmm, I'd like to see a lot more action masters reissued because some of them came with really cool, like transforming vehicles and stuff like that. And I'd like them them to get into some of those more offshoot lines as well, rather than just the just strict G one whatever. Um, my like wet dream. For an encore reissue is Scorponok. Definitely, we've got that. It's awesome. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, there was like two uh, Transformers that I wasn't allowed to play with. Or it was me and this other kid that lived down the street, and he had a Scorponok and Trypticon. I had Metroplex and like uh, a bunch of the you know movie figures and stuff like that. And he would never let me play with them, and you know, basically held a grudge for you know. 25 years, I guess you could say. But uh, as soon as I started collecting, dude, I went and bought a Scorponok and a Trypticon. Nice. So out of spite. Yeah, yeah. I, I, dude. It's not like I like try to find the guy online so I could like look him up 25 years later and be like, yeah, you know that stuff you never let me play with? I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have. He'd, he'd been like, who is this? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, Charles, was that was that it for the questions? Yeah, that's about it for me. All right, uh, Dakota, do you had some as well? Yeah. Um, my first question is, what sparked your uh, your general interest in wanting to collect? Wanting to collect in general, um, it started with Transformers for sure. Um, I've been collecting just over two years now. Um, I was just looking through Craigslist, you know, I was out on my own, just really established out of college, like that kind of thing, work was going well, and I was living, well, yeah, like at the time, because it's almost, it's going on three years now, so never mind, because I'm trying to think of how long I've been living with Liz, and this is our second year, so sorry, it was before I moved in with her, but I was living alone at the time. And I was just like, you know, I want to start decorating the house with some stuff. I really like Transformers. So I went on Craigslist, and there was just this guy selling a ton of classics and stuff like that. And he probably had, like, every original classics release ever made, and I should have cleaned him the fuck out looking back. (laughs) But the only thing I bought was, like, a Japanese uh, Nemesis Convoy from Heart Robots or whatever. That was the one thing I bought. Then I left. And then when I got a little bit more into collecting, I called him up a couple months later, and he's like, I think I lost it all. Because, you know, he probably found out, like, he was ripping himself off. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's what got me started. Once I got that figure, I was like, huh, let me read up what's out today. What's going on with Transformers nowadays? So from there, I found Cybertron, started posting on there. Then I found TFW. And, of course, you know, started posting there a lot more regularly and stuff like that and, and just became what it was. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, uh, question two, uh, what drove you to start reviewing figures, both pictorial and uh, video? You know, um, TFW's Cool Stuff thread, I remember I started posting there, and they were, like, just really crappy cell phone pictures from my work desk. Like, I had a couple of Rudicus, and I saw the thread, and I was like, oh, I want to play and have fun, too. Um, and I just started posting posting pictures of them, like, fighting each other and all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, from there, I kind of started looking at some of the photos there from people who actually did photography, you know. And I was like, oh, well, they've got really nice backgrounds. And I just asked questions, like, what kind of background is that? Is that poster board? What are you using for, like, your lighting? Oh, a light box, blah, blah, blah. And I had this old, like, Fujifilm point-and-shoot, and I went from there. And then I, as I really started to get into it, you know, I bought my first DSLR, you know, yeah. um, camera. So started taking some more fine quality pictures and stuff like that. And since I had a camera, I don't really know why, but I was just bored and I was like, oh, this records 1080p video. Shit. <laughs> Let me post a review. And I posted my first review, you know, people commented on it and stuff like that. And it was just really, really encouraging, you know, seeing people like Optibonimus and Piao and stuff like that posting my thread. And it just went from there, you know. I've always been somebody who's done this for fun. You know, I'm not looking to have 50 million subscribers. If I got there, great. But it's one of those things I do on the side, the video thing. Um, But pictorial reviews and stuff like that, that's really where my heart is, and that's why I made my site and stuff like that, to showcase what I love to do. Yeah, and see, I got I got to be honest. I uh, I came across your pictorial reviews long before I did the uh, your videos, and I was like, man, how come people can't do pictorial reviews like this? You know, whenever someone would try, I'm just like, ah, it sucks compared to TJ's. You know, but I didn't really want to, like, take a dump in their Cheerios, but... So I just never said anything. Never heard that before. 
<laughs> what do you come up with like this disgusting stuff all like can't just use like a regular metaphor or, that is a regular metaphor or, for him yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go so but thank you man and that's the thing you know i my goal with photography is to be able to make the person who's looking at my picture see the toy how i see it yeah you know, and it's crazy because even with the misses like Liz and stuff like that, it's one of the few things to where if I show her a toy or whatever, oh, whatever, it's a toy. But if I show her a cool picture, like showing off some features and things like that, that sparks her interest because it it relays how cool, you know, it just shows you, bam, this is how I look at these toys. Yeah. You know, when you've actually got them in poses and stuff like that, when you actually add some effects, you know, some flares mm -hmm. to the – or throwbacks to the animes that they were from or the shows, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just all about making people see things – or not making them see it, or showing you how I see these and why I think that these toys are great or collectible or worth my money or your money if you choose to get it too or why it's a dud, you know. That yeah. kind of thing, and I don't know, like, photography is one of those things. I don't want to sound, like, hyper-obsessive, but I have become, like, that kind of person to where I'll take 20 shots of the same shot, pick out the best one. It's just how it goes, you know, and it gets kind of mundane for doing a pictorial review with 10 pictures where you use 10 out of 100 that you took. Um, but it's just something I've kind of found out I have some talent for and I really enjoy doing and it's not just toys. I love photography in general. Like, they're taking pictures of my dogs, nature, you know, Liz, my family, that kind of stuff. I love it. Yeah. And it's just being able to capture memories in a really nice way. Is is that why you keep on buying new dogs all the time? That you just get... <laughs> no, we're like done. done taking we pictures so done of with that. <laughs> Three's a charm, so... Yeah. So we're going to get like, a third, yeah. and that that's it. Last so, time no. we talked, you were, you know, Josh had asked you, uh, so you going to get that third dog? And you're like, no, no. Like two days later on Twitter, third puppy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because I, it's like I left, and for whatever reason, I was still thinking about the dog. And then I went and visited him again. And then I was like, okay. You know when you get a – dogs are like family. I don't know if you guys oh, have yeah. pets and stuff yeah. like that. I have a cat. But you could play. You can go Loser. to Petland and play with like 30 dogs or whatever, leave with no kind of attachment, no kind of whatever. But every so often there's like that pet that you feel like you own, like you left your pet there. That makes sense. You know, that's yeah. different. Like, and when I left that dog there, it was like, man, man, why did I leave my dog? You know, like that kind of thing. And it's different. Like, sometimes you find that attachment with the dog because it's not like we've been to Petland three times and come out with three dogs. Hell no. But... You know, we wanted three dogs, and we were lucky enough to find three that fit our, you know, preferences and our family in a short period of time. Yeah. So, I mean, I've lucked out because I'd rather not ha get used to having two grown dogs in the house and then get a puppy and have to do that all over again. Right yeah. now, like, we're in a mode to where we're good and trained owners to where we can relay things and train our dogs well. And that's one of the best parts about, like, actually taking a puppy class because it's like you don't come out at six weeks. You don't come out learning a million and one tricks, but you know how to teach your dog whatever you want it to do. That's why, you know, that video I made with Lacey, I can say, Lacey, go get a toy. She'll go get a toy and bring it to me. It's just te they teach you how to teach your dog. Yeah. yeah. So while you still got that knowledge going or whatever, that's the perfect time to where if you want to get more pets – cool instead of having to go spend 100 or 200 dollars to get them into a pet class again because you forgot everything with your first dog yeah does that make sense or yeah 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 so, i think that made perfect sense yeah we're not looking to open up a pet and zoo or anything like that we're done well i was gonna ask but... like, <laughs> you uh so you go to petland is where you bought the last one is that where you bought the other ones yes absolutely so i so now do you, like, start buying your dog food somewhere else? That way you don't, like, walk by another one and be like, oh, no. crap. No. <laughs> um, I love this one. <laughs> unfortunately, we buy this brand. It's called Yukonaba. Um, and it's, like, their puppy growth. My first dog, she gets a really bad rash if she eats other dog foods right now. 
So we just stick to that one. And unfortunately, Petland's the only place that has it. And it sucks because, like, there's a PetSmart a block away from where we live, and then, like, right next door to my wife's job, you know. So if we could pick it up there, it'd be great. But unfortunately, Petland's the only place that carries it. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you, Dakota, you have any more questions? Yeah, I got one and then, like, an add-on to one of uh, Charles's questions. Uh, question, my, my third question was, uh, when it, you know, I noticed, uh, TJ, when, whenever you posted on Twitter a couple of days after Iron Man 3 came out, how you were just kind of like, you know what, screw Transformers, uh, I'm going into these Iron, these, you know, Iron Man hot toys and stuff. And, uh, you know, it got me to thinking, um, you know, because the, the brand is kind of, you know, as it proceeds forward, it's kind of dying for me as well. You know, I find myself going back and getting uh, older stuff um, more than I am newer stuff. And that brings me to the question when it comes to Transformers, uh, what would have to happen in order for you to re kickstart your, you know, kind of loyalty or love of, of the brand in general? You know, there's a part of me that'll always probably, you know, stick with Transformers, even if it's just an interest, if there's nothing else that I want to really buy. Classics, unfortunately, I'm pretty much complete, even like bot concepts and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm just keeping current. Um, but there's a part of me that doesn't necessarily want to sell off all my Transformers, but I want to sell off all my classics and stick to Masterpiece because they fit more with where my collecting habits are headed. More of that high-end, bigger, um, scale-wise, like highly detailed figure, more so than the more small, cartoony-looking things that classics uh, provide, you know? But it just sucks because classics is just so full, you know. It's got so yeah. many characters from so many different series and stuff like that. The third parties, that's pretty much what every third party toy is. Um, you know, meant for classics, that kind of thing too. So if I sell off all my classics, it's gonna be a huge dent to my collection just in terms of the amount of space they take up. It's going to be huge. Oh, wow. Like this room's gonna look almost empty, you know? Um, but at the same time, I think Masterpiece is definitely on an upswing with how often they're, you know, doing their releases and stuff like that. And I'm just kind of at a point where I'd rather have, you know, 10 high-end figures than 50, you know, just kind of small whatever figures that I don't really want to be bothered with. Because that's the thing, like, you know... If your preference is masterpiece toys and just the size and the detail and things like that of those, then you kind of look at classics and it seems kind of childish almost in terms of the size, the more cartoony look and things like that. So, I mean, like I said, I'm always going to have some interest in Transformers, but collection-wise, I just want it to be more towards the high-end stuff, like stuff that I could feel comfortable putting in a Detolf case, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that kind of stuff. Just stuff yeah. that looks nice. Okay. More adult. You know, they're all toys, but some definitely look more adult than other toys. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, I guess I guess I can go on to my, to kind of my fourth question. Uh, Charles had asked you, uh, you know, what what kind of figures you would you know suggest the most that that aren't you know Transformers related uh, when it comes to Mecha or otherwise figures? Um, I want to know what you would suggest the least or like not suggest at all um, when it when it comes to that because I know we talked about Revoltex a little bit and uh, you know those are terrible, but I want to know if there are any, there are anything else you know. You know I started with Revoltex. And it seems like it's always everybody's, like, starter anime line because they're so freaking affordable. They go so in-depth with the lines that they do, and they have licenses for everything. Yeah. From, like, freaking Full Metal Alchemist to Transformers. Like, they've got toys of everything. So that's that's beautiful. Um, but at the same time, just quality and having to use the Revel Tech joints and things like that for everything, which really aren't that nice and make the figures look silly, um, it, there are just some things that hinder them that are, unfortunately, standard for their products. So that's going to be the one that, if you can skip over that, 
you know, just save yourself the trouble because it seems like everybody who gets into Rebel Tax eventually sells their Rebel Tax once they find better lines that carry the characters that they they want to buy. Yeah, I've actually gone through that just recently, so I can Absolutely. I can totally relate. Yeah. Absolutely. So other than that, though, you know, um, there are some lines that I'm definitely shifting out of, like the Super Robot Chigokin, more because of their size than anything else. It's like a six-inch uh, mecha scale. Mm-hmm. And for the Super Robots and stuff, when you start getting into 10-inch figures, 12-inch, things like that, and Soul of Chigokin, Future, Max Goken, like that kind of thing, um, they just look really small, almost like a masterpiece compared to classics, except it's all high-end. You know, even with these mecha, there are definitely tiers of just quality, size, aesthetic, like that kind of thing, too. Yeah. So, um, but the thing about Super Robot Chigokin is, like, Future, you're paying $400, $500 per toy, period. Well worth it, but it is what it is. But Super Robot Chigokin, you're paying 40 maybe $50 per toy, you know? Yeah. So it's definitely a lot more affordable, and you get a lot of characters in that line, too. So, and, I mean, uh, that would be one that I'd recommend, actually, to people wanting to get into it, just in and general. The, and then uh, the Mike Gain, that was my actually first SRC figure, and uh, I actually found it for, you know, $20, like you said, uh, from watching your review, and that's what I kind of like, well, let me try this out, because it's really yeah. cheap, and, uh, you know, Started watching some, uh, you know, you know, Mike Gain reviews, uh, you know, with the original, and uh, kind of got me into Gal Gygar and you know the whole Brave series and stuff like that. So I thought it was really cool. And absolutely, I mean, for me, I definitely started with toys first, and then started to get into the anime that accompany them. And then once you get into the anime, just even searching for anime, you find other anime that's similar to this mecha, and it just, like, balloons from there, you know? So when people tell me about how to get into it, because you're always going to find those, like, dickheads and snobs, you know? I have a lot of knowledge now, but when you're first starting out, there are always going to be those people that are like, oh, well, I have no job, and I spent, I've spent 2,000 hours watching fucking anime, so that makes me better than you somehow, <laughs> even though I'm in somebody's fucking basement and you're not. Um... Don't let that deter you. Find, if you're into figures, buy figures you fucking like, and don't let anybody tell you what to buy, because they're, they're always going to be jerks. Um, but from there, learn a little bit about the figures that you've got. You know, you got this figure, it's really awesome or whatever. Like, even if you just, like, Wikipedia it, like, learn its story and stuff like that, and then watch the anime if you're into what it's about, you know, that kind of thing, because for every two or three bad mecha anime, there's one that's really awesome. Yeah. You know? So, unfortunately, they're not titled the really awesome anime that you should watch, but you'll find them. And if not, you've still got toys you really like because I've got a lot of toys from anime that I just, like, despise. Like, seriously. You know, that's just how it goes. But cool toys are cool freaking toys, and there are quite a few people out there who buy these toys for the toys and not to have some homage to their fucking Power Ranger hero or <laughs> what the fuck ever, you know? Like, I guess that's another thing for me. Age-wise and stuff like that, I'm 30, I work, you know, have a family, I have dogs, like that kind of thing. So when I don't have the time unless it's something I'm really going out of my way to watch to sit around and just watch a 40 episode series of something and without any kind of opportunity cost for that time you know there's always something else I could be doing so I try to read up and see what the story's about first like Wikipedia things like that and then if I really want to watch the anime I go for it you know like oh that looks interesting oh those characters look really cool too I want to know more see that scene that they're writing about that kind of thing but just sitting around all day and watching that crap, I I wouldn't. Because the only reason I'm getting into that is because you were saying what anime to start with first, you know, and one of those questions or whatever. And honestly, none. I wouldn't suggest really any of them unless there's a character you just plain like, 
you know, there are always going to be ones that I can say this one was really cool to watch, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily start watching anime before you get toys, you know? You find a cool robot, it's a cool robot, it's going to be a cool robot whether you like the anime or not, and guess what? You didn't waste your time if yeah. you don't like it, so that's my thing. Sorry to kind of rant there or whatever. Uh, I've, I've literally had nine questions lined up, I'm down to two. <laughs> oh, okay, sweet. Sweet. All right. Uh did you have anything else to cut it? Oh no, that was that that was it. That Okay. Good. Uh these are kind of like general questions, but this is something so I'd like to hear, you know, anyone's opinion on it, but this is something that I remember a few months back uh whether I heard it on TJ's podcast or it was a tweet from him, but he said Hasbro really needs to make a Transformer line that the quality and price is right in between classics and masterpiece. And it was just like, I can't agree with that you know, anymore uh, yeah. because that would be right in my wheelhouse. I would love something like that. So uh, I guess, you know, TJ, if you had anything you wanted to add to that, or do you think Hasbro will ever make something like that? Sure. Um, yeah, that was definitely on my podcast, and I'm a big pro- proponent of that. Like, I really feel that there should be an in-between, like, classics and masterpiece line that maybe is more towards the classic aesthetic, but a little bit bigger, a little bit more intricate with the transformations, maybe like a 7- to 8-inch scale instead of the 4- to 5 that they're doing right now, like that kind of thing. Maybe make the price point, you know, $30 for a deluxe, 40 for a Voyager, like of that line, you know, because obviously they're going to be a bigger scale, but like that kind of thing to where their deluxe figures are the size of size of our Voyagers now. Yeah. Um, but just more detailed, a little bit more intricate, more geared towards collectors. Like that's the thing. Instead of a Fall of Cybertron, maybe if they did like a Fall of Cybertron premium line on the side to where okay, well, you've got these little hollow things that parents are going to buy their kids, whatever. But if you saw, like, maybe five or six in stock on a shelf, something that's not costing, like, TRU, Hasbro, a lot of money to make and distribute and stuff like that, but was more geared towards you, like, maybe those same characters, but bigger, better plastic, um, you know, just more detailed in their sculpting and their paint jobs and stuff like that, I, I would be all over that. What what I'd, I'd I'd like to add to that um, yeah. as well, uh, what that should be is that should be the Transformers Collectors Club, but it's not. There you uh, go, perfect. You know that's that's honestly my kind of dream. You know we why are we getting these? You know sometimes great. I mean I, I I can't lie. I love the the repaints and the characters that the, the Fun Pub makes, but you know why 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 of you know pre existing store bought molds. You know, we should at least, you know, for it to be a true kind of collector's club, we should be getting newer molds at premium prices because, you know, we are the target demographic for the collector's club. Therefore, we should dictate what we do and don't get. Absolutely. I agree with that, too. Yeah. I, I would actually buy a subscription then. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, I, I think that's, you know, kind of like what I said uh, in a couple of podcasts back is uh, I think – you know, we're starting to see the push. Now, we we did see that they're starting to delay Prow and you know, Blue Streak and them, but uh, it looks like if they can come out with several of these, um, you know, masterpiece figures uh, at that lower price point because, you know, they are selling out of, you know, Red Alert and uh, Sideswipe, and they kind of see that this might be the way to go because a lot of these, they could just repaint them. And, you know, they could sell it a lot quicker. Maybe just add a different head, do something like that, and repaint it. Uh, But we're starting to see to where I think maybe about a year from now, we'll get to that maybe a figure every, like, month, a month and a half. But I kind of wish we still had, you know, this. This would be something that I would probably just jump on. Absolutely. And especially with it being something that would be available at retail. Because yeah. who wants to freaking pay for shipping every time they get a nice figure? Yes. Yeah. You know, how yeah. satisfying would it be to have something that's just really nice and meant for our demographic right there in the store on the shelf? Honestly, yeah. if we're already paying collector's prices, we should get the shipping for free. Uh, but I really I really don't want to get too much into that. But, you know, paying 300 and 
$75 for this year's BotCon box set, and I didn't get shipping free, and they charged me a credit card processing fee. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> just, that's, you know, whatever. It really sucks I missed out on that subscription service. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're, I, th- I mean, they're great looking figures. I really like, you know, I mean, there's probably one I would, you know, I'd like to trade for another, but I like the subscription service figures. I like the BotCon figures this year, but my goodness, you know, there's there's only so much abuse I'm I'm willing to, you know, take uh, before I'm just like, you know what, no, that's it, no, going to TFCon. All right, did anyone else have anything to say on that? Before I move on to the last thing here. I'm I'm good. Good? All right. Uh, With uh, Transformers finally coming out with Triple Changer, so we saw uh, Springer, you know, Blitzwing, and more than likely we're going to see Sandstorm, and a big figure like Metroplex himself. What other ones do you guys want to see here, like, near future, like, very soon? Like, maybe... Maybe like a Trypticon or... Yeah, yeah. That's going to be mine right there, Trypticon. <laughs> like a generation That's... style? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that would kind of like entice me because right now I don't plan on buying the Generations Metroplex. I just... I'm selling all those classic looking ones and generation style uh, Transformers, so I'm not even going to have a shelf of those. So, But I was thinking about getting him just on his own just because he's a big robot. But... I kind of decided, you know, here lately that I wasn't going to get him. But if they do come out with the Trypticon, I'll probably end up having to go back and hunt him down. Uh, I guess to kind of like answer your question, uh, it wouldn't be anything like huge, and it wouldn't really be a triple changer I'd look forward to. But you know, if if there were to be anything that I'd really like to see coming out like right now, uh, it would honestly, I really want a you know, but a classics uh update or release of Star Saber and Victory Leo that could combine that have, you know, we got them in Robot Masters and their, you know, their articulation wasn't that great, but they were like really scaled down versions of the original G1 figures. But I'd like to see them in the classics aesthetic and, you know, maybe with like some Nick Roche designs or something like that. Absolutely. Um, But other than that, uh, the only thing I'd really want to see is I I just want to see, I want Hasbro to pay Nick Roche like $500 million and for him to design like draw us up figures of all the IDW characters and I'd you know I'd buy them I'd sell my existing classics collection right now with a you know very cheap just to just to start buying those and you know if you guys don't mind me adding one that I'd like to see I would honestly like to see more my dream like just dream would be to have box sets I don't know if you guys remember, like, when Classics was around and, like, towards the first movie, they had, like, this Legends of Bumblebee box set with, like, a Classics, a movie, and they were all, like, similar paint jobs and stuff like that. Do you guys yeah, remember, remember that or no? Okay, cool. What if they came out with something like a three-figure box set, like All Hail Megatron, and Uh-oh. they had, like, a Voyager um, Stealth Bomber, um, a Voyager, like... A re-release of, like, the Classics gun, maybe in, like, gray colors or something like that. Yeah. You know, like that kind of thing. And a tank. Oh, my goodness. I would... Oh! I would... <laughs> oh, dude, I'd lose awesome it. Thing. <laughs> I would completely lose it, because we're getting Stealth Bomber Megatron as a deluxe. I'm like, yeah, that should be deluxe. a Voyager. Exactly. Yeah. And so, Bob, I'm still glad I'm getting them, but it's just like, oh! Oh, yep. dude, I would... I I, I'm, I'm not really squirmish when it comes to like buying Transformers, but oh, when it comes to those IDW designs, Absolutely. I just melt like butter, dude. Especially buying, you know, uh, <laughs> you hear this guy <laughs> Blitzwing and and Springer this past week. I just no Springer is out of control. I have not been able to put Springer down. I just, He's out of control. And it's the, oh, it's that perfect Nick Roche design. It's like oh, mm-hmm. I, I really got to meet Nick Roche. Like I just need to get out and just meet him. Just Stop. Need to go. Go hang out with him. Yeah, just sit outside of his window. <laughs> I just, He'll I just want to be like, I just want to go meet him and say, Nick, will you draw me like one of your French girls? <laughs> what do you even say to that? That's him, like the whole podcast. He like things come out of his mouth sometimes that you just like, awesome, <laughs> like so out of left field that you're like, I don't even know how to respond to that. So we'll just move on. 
But if you guys don't mind, let me hit on Springer. You know what you were saying, man. Go ahead. Uh, Dakota. Yeah. It's just the way that you said that he just bleeds that Nick Roche sign and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That character has fucking personality. Yes. That sculpt is just bleeding freaking charisma. When you get him in a bot mode or whatever, it's like the comic came to life. And that's where I say, like, the fans' project designs have just become so soulless to me. Yeah. Because you could see using that as, like, an example to where I'm coming from, where it's just, like, so generic now. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, like, whenever I got him, you know, I've got uh, Last Stand of the Wreckers, I've got the hardcover edition, I've got the original comics of them, I've got the IDW volume, uh, volume 6, I believe, is, is what they came in. I have just, you know, ever since getting that Springer on Wednesday... I have reread Last Stand of the Wreckers three times between now and then just because, you know, I'm looking at this this Springer that we got as a figure and I'm looking at, you know, at the comics and I'm like, wow, uh, I can't believe it. You know, finally a dream come true. Absolutely. He he is great. He yeah. is great. And he really looks nice next to, like, Cup with the um, eye gear oh, head upgrades yes. and stuff like that. Man. And put him, putting him next to uh, Mech Ideas, Apex, and Geminis. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful! It all just looks good. So I brought him up, Josh. What you gonna say about it? I was just waiting. You know, you knew it was coming. <laughs> I, I was like, it took him an hour before he finally said something about him. Nice. So, yeah, I, I just, man, oh man, I can't, I can't get. It. I mean, and Blitzwing's really cool too, but he ain't nothing like Springer, uh, hands down. I, I, I thought a lot of people were having problems with uh, Blitzwing. Yeah, true. I know my mine. Uh, the shoulders don't lock, and that's that's about it. Other than that, I love his tank mode and his jet mode. They're very successful, and robot mode isn't that bad either. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I was definitely impressed to see three solid modes from Hasbro. There are a couple of issues I have, like the gapping and stuff like that of the like side fenders. But and I think like most people have, but at the same time it's like, wow, this is a legitimate like IDW style car. This is a legitimate IDW style Springer helicopter. It's just done well. And you know, I think about my Warbot Defender and how it takes like twenty minutes to transform him from one oh, mode to the other because you have to bend this piece at this perfect angle, then swivel this like 90 degrees this way then take that part and put it backwards then oh wait it's a double jointed elbow so you gotta put it a little bit it's like crazy do any of you guys own Warbot Defender and know what I'm I, uh, talking about I used to so I know exactly what you're oh talking about oh my god it's one of the few figures where I need instructions every freaking time yeah. I transform them even if it's like 20 minutes apart it's crazy and then to see this one where it's like 5 minutes okay sweet yep. Uh, something, since you brought up Warbot, I'd really like to kind of touch on that. Uh, sure. Um, you know, I still think Warbot's a great toy. Even though I don't own it anymore, I actually traded it for Beast Wars, so it has nothing to do with getting Ooh, the Springer. Nice. Um, but, you know, in ter- like if, if, you, if you prefer that G1 blocky aesthetic, Warbot is still totally the way to go. It's a great figure. It's got that aesthetic. It's got that G1 vibe and feel. Mm-hmm. But if, if you love that updated classics, uh, IDW type stuff, this new generation's one is, is I mean, it screams it. I agree. I agree. And I'm not selling my Warbot Defender. You know, yeah. even though I got to admit, I, aesthetically, I like the robot mode of um, the generation's one a lot better. A whole lot better. Um, it's still a solid toy. Warbot Defender is, oh, and yeah. it matches well with you know the other fans' project records like Ultra Magnus, Hot Rod, like that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Um, well, not records, but you know, yeah, the other like season three or whatever figures that they have. So it's just cool stuff, and it's just nice to see Hasbro really kick it into gear because I haven't even transformed Blitzwing yet because I'm that enamored with Springer. <laughs> yeah. Like, legit, Blitzwing has been sitting in robot mode just hanging out <laughs> yeah. on a speaker um, until I'm just ready for him. But, yeah, Springer's got my heart right now, man. My That's Blitzwing hasn't figure. even made it, to the, made it to the shelf yet. I just kind of took it out, set it on the table, exactly. and went straight to Springer. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> like, I, I think, had to get out of the box to throw the box away. And yeah. That was it. I think it's funny how we've spent, like, the last 20 minutes gushing over Springer. <laughs> Sorry, man. I did not mean to, you know, I, get you guys off the beaten course or anything like that or take you off the path. But, yeah. Uh, no, that's I, I love it. I was going to say, yeah, I'm, I can, I, man, I could literally talk about that Springer all day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think about it when I'm at work, you know. It's it's pretty serious. Thinking about asking it to marry me. Hey, there you go. <laughs> all right. There we go with that left field, well, right? I, I was like, it's it's been five minutes. Uh, it's bound to come as well. So, uh, If you guys didn't have anything else to uh, talk about, you know, then we were going to go ahead and you know end this segment because I think we what. About an hour and thirty minutes, so, or yeah. an hour and fifteen. Around All right. Well, I'd like to you know thank our guest TJ Duckett for coming on. Uh, TJ, why don't you go ahead and tell people where to find you on like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, my Twitter is Kuma underscore Style. You know, like my website, my website KumaStyle.com, and my YouTube is YouTube.com slash TJ Duckett. But with my website, just so everybody knows, I do I do video and written reviews for every figure. So if you see, you know, a review on my site, it's also going to have the YouTube video on in that post as well. In case you prefer to watch the video instead of reading through the pictorial and stuff like that, um, so you have it all. And I try to be well versed and cater to the different demographics and stuff like that because surprisingly, a lot of people prefer uh, written in pictorial reviews. You know, I don't know if it's just so that they can read it at their own pace, look at pretty pictures, what, but there's a pretty good market out there and the website's been doing really, really, really well. But once again, Twitter, Kuma underscore style. Um, definitely, I'm on there, checking and talking robots all the time, having fun. I do a lot of goofing around on there more than anything. Most of the stuff I tweet is stupid jokes and YouTube videos. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I just love to talk shop when it comes to toys and cartoons and movies and all kinds of stuff, man. So, nerds, get at me. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, man. And thank uh, you for having thank you, me. Everyone else. Yeah, uh, dude. Definitely appreciated it, man. It was it was cool having you on, TJ. Absolutely, absolutely. Love talking to you guys. Seriously. Oh, yeah. All time. right. Thanks a lot. Oh, go ahead, Charles. I'm just saying, uh, big time. Thanks to to TJ for for joining us. It was fun. Yeah, and just so everybody knows, these are guys that I talk to. I'm normally on here talking to them after their podcast or their show every Saturday anyway. I talk to these guys all the time. These are my bros. So it's not like I'm just on here on a special occasion. So if you follow me, follow these guys because you're going to see them mentioned in half my tweets anyway. So We, we actually paid him $3,000 to be on this show. He did like to like come on afterwards after we've all been like drinking. Thinking after the podcast yeah. is over, so we can like yeah. make fun of us. Pretty yeah, much. pretty much. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you.